Now that we've set up the scene, we've created a character, we've created an item type, and we've set up and positioned a basic item, let's go into the details on how to configure these items. We're going to focus on melee weapons today, and for this video I'm going to go into detail on configuring the sword and the body melee weapons. The body melee weapon is a little bit unique because there is no visible item, but the process is pretty much the same as any regular item. Um, with the body, we're going to want the existing hands and feet to actually do the punching and the kicking. So that's the only difference between that, but we'll get into that. Um, the first step is to open up the item manager. And well, actually, I just closed it, so let me open up the item manager. And now we have the item manager open. This should be familiar to you, so I'm not going to spend too much detail. Make sure you watch the prior video on that goes into, into depth into creating a first and a, or a third person item. Um, so the item type that we want to use is sword. We want to assign it to the Nolan character. The animator ID is 22 for the sword in the demo animator. And that's just a unique representation of the sword. So the animator knows that the sword is equipped. Um, this first person base should be the arms, and so that looks good because that was set up in a previous video. And we want to assign it the sword model. So I'm going to search for that sword model and drag that in as a visible item. We can see the item parent is the right hand, and that looks good because we want the sword to be parented to the right hand. We do not have an animator controller for the sword, so we can leave that empty. And we also want to add a third person item. So I'm going to drag the sword in for that as well. Uh, the right hand is selected and that looks good. The action type should not be shootable weapon. It should be melee weapon because we're creating a sword and not an assault rifle. The consumable item definition will be left blank because we are not consuming any item types when the sword is used. Um, this state configuration and profile we're going to leave blank because we want to configure the sword completely from scratch. This, if you're interested in what this does, there's a video that's dedicated and goes over exactly what this does. So let's go ahead and build item. And now we'll get that out of the way and we can see that we have a basic sword. Now when I hit play, we should see the sword being equipped. And it is, but it's kind of in the wrong position. So for both first and third per person, we have positioning issues. In order to fix that, um, we can click on the sword item game object and then manually reposition it. I talked about this in the first or the third person video. Um, but yeah, you, you position this in while in play mode and then you copy the transform values and paste it back in edit mode. I've already positioned this sword within the demo scene, so I am just going to take those values and paste them into here. And we're going to get lucky with the sword in that the first and the third person visible item properties or transform has the same values. So I can just copy that transform and then I can paste it for first person. And let's paste it. So now when I hit play, we should see the sword is being positioned correctly. Yeah, or it's in the hands. And that looks good for first person and that looks good for third person. The thing with first person is as we move around, we want to kind of give a sense that the sword has weight to it. So we're going to change the pivot position of the sword and we're going to change this first person arms pivot and we want it to be closer to the right hand to kind of simulate the sword having weight. And we can do that by adjusting the melee or the first person perspective properties. And that is on this sword uh, game object. Now you'll notice that there are these visible items that are positioned underneath the rig. And then there's this one for uh, third person and then there's this one for first person but let's just collapse both of those 
and you'll see under Nolan items, the sword game object, this has all the different components that kind of manage the sword state. So this is where you'll be spending a lot of your time editing. You won't necessarily, once you get the sword positioned, you won't really be editing that visible item very much. So for the first person perspective item, we need to change a few of these values. And I'm gonna look on my other screen so that I can cheat and see what values we need to start using. And the first, item, first value that we need to change is the position offset. And actually, let me go into play mode just so you can see this being changed as I am changing it. So if I change this position offset, it will adjust the position of the arms. I'll get that into a better view. It will adjust the position of the arms. And we want to use a value of, that's the value that is used in the demo scene. It doesn't look good right now, but let's give it a little bit so that we can get the correct positioning and rotation. Um, we're going to set that. And so that is when the item is not, is just kind of in its rest position. This exit offset is the location that the sword should move to when I am unequipping the item or I am just starting an equip. And so what this does is I, you'll notice that I'm modifying the Y value so that it, the sword moves down and that's so that the sword moves out of view when it's unequipping. Um, the other value that we want to modify is this rotation exit offset and we want to increase that value to 40 so there is a more extreme angle when the sword is being unequipped. Then the last thing that we want to modify is this position or this pivot position offset and this is what will change that pivot game object to be in kind of to be closer to the actual sword model so that it will appear that the sword has more weight. So let's go ahead and hit play now. And as we move around in first person, you can see there's a little bit of difference in that now the pivot is closer to the sword and it, it kind of simulates that, hey, there's weight here. So let's go into third person. And if you notice, as I'm aiming, the feet, they don't really move at all. And they don't really look like they're in a good melee stance. The reason for this is because the sword should use an animator movement set ID of one. And what this does is it tells the animator, hey, move your feet so that I can get it, so that it can be in the correct position. And you'll notice that now the character's feet move when I'm aiming. And so that just looks a lot better. You'll want to set this movement set ID for a lot of the melee weapons. Uh, actually, most of them, everyone besides the, uh, actually, I, sh I shouldn't say that, but for most of them, you'll want to set this to a value of one. Um, the body melee weapon you will not set, but definitely if you're getting weird animation issues, take a look, make sure this value is set to one, and you can verify it within the animator controller what it should be set to. By, actually, let's, let's look at the animator controller just so that we can see how it's being used. Um, if I go ahead and, and disable the live link, we can see when the character is aiming idle, we can see that there's this transition and it has this movement set ID of one for when the melee is aiming. And this is what will move the feet on the base layer. And you can see we have just a regular one where the movement set ID is zero, and we have one for the bow, and that has an ID of two. So this is specific for the demo animator controller. We highly recommend that you create your own animator controller, and then you can use this movement set ID in any way that you want. We just found that this ends up being the best way. So now let's get back to the sword. and. Actually, let's, let's start attacking just to see what happens. I think there's gonna be a couple of issues. Um, I like seeing it in third person in this case. So let's go ahead and attack. So I'm attacking and I, I'm getting stuck. The reason for this is because the animator is set up to work with combos. And right now I just have a single attack animation. And so I want what I want the sword to do is swing from 
swing uh, right to left and then left to right. And I can set that up by going to the uh, melee weapon properties or the melee weapon component. And then I can go to this uh, use the use animator audio state. And right now you'll see that it just has a value of two. Now what this is saying is that when the sword is attacking, it should change the item substate index to two. Well, we want it to change it from for two at the start. And then if you do a combo, we want it to be three. And these values are set up within the animator already. And it will now go from two to three uh, by just if I attack within the uh, use duration. So now if I go ahead and and I attack, we'll see that the character will swing right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And he doesn't get stuck either. But you'll notice that there's a problem in third person with his left hand. The reason for this is because the IK is getting wonky and we want to set different IK weights for when the sword is equipped and we can do that by using the state system and creating a new preset and there is a preset that's already created for this and that is um, let me go to the melee folder this melee character ik preset and we'll want to set this when the sword item set is active and so i have two things to show first i want to show this, what this uh, melee preset looks like. You'll see that it just sets the hand weight to zero. So the hand weight for IK will be set to zero and that will prevent the hand from going through the body. So the other thing that we need to set is this sword state name. And we can do that by going to the item set manager. And when this item set is equipped, we want it to play the sword state or set the sword state. Uh, there's a video on the state system and I highly recommend that you watch that because that will give you more details into how this is actually working. The state system is an extremely powerful system and it's used a lot throughout the character controller so you should definitely get familiar with how that works. All right so now that we have that let's go ahead and keep attacking and see what happens. Let's get back to third person and hopefully yeah notice the character's arm they, it no longer goes through the body. So that looks a lot better. If I switch to first person, I should also continue to be able to attack. So that's looking good. The one other thing that I want to change with the sword is I want a little melee trail to appear to kind of show kind of a slash through the air. And I can do that by clicking on the sword and then going to the melee weapon. And if I scroll down, you can see there's this trail game object. And I am going to select the trail. And this is a prefab that I created using the, um, using the object manager. So I just went to objects and then I created a melee trail. And what this will do is you can see that it's just it's just a pretty basic component. Um, what this will do is it will allow it will spawn when the melee item starts. And actually, let me go back to the sword and make sure trail visibility should be only when the character attacks. So that looks good. And if we scroll down, we want we can see that there's this trail location field we need to set the location that the trail should appear. And we need to do that for both first and third person perspective. So let me just create an empty game object, call it trail. And I am going to cheat to see where I had positioned the trail in the demo scene. And I used this value. So I'm going to copy that component. Actually, I could copy the entire game object. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, actually, the component will be better. Copy that component. And now let me paste it for uh, first person as well. And let's go to the sword. We'll create an empty game object. And we will paste those values. 
and we will call this trail. So now the only thing that we need to do is assign this trail location within the melee weapon perspective properties for each perspective. So this trail location for first person should be right there. And for third person, it should be assigned right there. So now when I attack using the melee weapon, we should see a neat little trail appearing. So there it is. And you can even see it better with third person. So it just adds a neat little effect. So now that we've set up the sword, let's go ahead and set up the body item type. Again, this one is very similar to the sword in that you start off through the item manager, except we are not going to be specifying a visible item. So the name is called my body, and the item definition is also called my body. I don't know why I'm using the my prefix for this video, but that's what I started with, so I'm going to continue on. The Nolan game object should be the character and it has an animator ID of 21. The first person base as the first person arms works well. We do not want to specify a visible item for either the first person or third person, but we do definitely want to add a third person item, so we'll leave that checkbox selected. The action type should be melee weapon, and we are not consuming any item types, so we'll leave that empty, and we're also leaving the state configuration and profile empty. So now when we hit build item, we should see this new game object created and that looks good. Let's go ahead and hit play and just to see what happens. The sword was the first item added, so that is why it's equipped right now. If we hit the E key to toggle to the next item, we can see that it starts to toggle and we, I mean, we, we don't really want to toggle to the body. The reason for that is just because we only want to toggle to the body when you actually play the toggle equip uh, ability and not equip next or previous. We can do that by going to the item set manager and changing this item set so it is the default item set and you cannot switch to it. By making these two changes, first off by making the default change that will allow the toggle equip item ability to switch to this item set when it is triggered and then the can switch to option will prevent the equip previous and next item abilities from switching to that particular item set. Oh if you're interested in having like if you were creating a new item type and you wanted that item type to be up here first for the default loadout you could just switch them um, but in this case we do want the sword to appear first so we're just we're going to keep that up top so now when i hit play and i press the e key the character should not do anything so i'm pressing the e key and the character is not doing anything but when i press the t key to toggle the item he should put the sword down so that part's working well if we now look at the character we can see if we go to the item set manager, we can see that the sword is actually still active, even though it really shouldn't be. The reason for that is because the body should be using a different set of, uh, it does not use the animation events for equipping and unequipping. So we just want to deselect animation events and we want to set a zero duration for both equip and unequip. And what this says is, instead of waiting on an animation from the animator to equip or unequip, just equip or unequip immediately. That's what this duration does. So now when I hit play and I hit T, hopefully we will see that the body, yeah, it looks like it, the body was equipped. Um, we can verify that by going to the item set manager Scrolling down and we see that the item set one is active with the item type of body. So that's working well. Um, let's go ahead and let's set up some hitboxes for the body. Now when we created the sword, the hitbox was created automatically and you can actually see a representation of the hitbox by this yellow box. And that was created automatically because we had a visible item. However, with the body, we don't have a visible item because we're using the existing character game objects. 
So we need to create the hitboxes. The hitboxes are what will cause the damage if they come into contact with another object. So I'm going to create a fist hip hitbox and then also a uh, hitbox for the feet or the shin. And to get started, let's just create a new empty game object. Let's call it left fist. And I am cheating and using these values. And then I am also going to be adding a sphere collider. And that's a little bit big, so let's change it to there. Um, and actually, I don't really like that value. Let's change that value to right there. There, I like that value better. <laughs> um, and then let's set this zero. I guess I shouldn't have cheated. All right, so that's the value we'll use. Let's duplicate this game object. We'll paste it under the right hand and we'll rename it to right fist. And then we will paste the transform values. So now it's under his right hand. Uh, so that's for the fist for third person. Let's do the fist for first person now. And I will expand all this. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. We'll go and move it under his right hand for first person. Duplicate that value or paste that value. And we'll set the name. So now that is positioned correctly. And we'll do one last duplication here. And we will set it under the left hand. And instead of the right fist, it's called the left fist. Not left left, it's called the left fist. Not left fist first. There we go, I got it. And we will paste these values. Now, technically, the any item underneath the um, first person arms should have a layer set to overlay just so that the standard render pipeline will correctly render this object in front of anything else because there is no mess associated with this it doesn't actually matter but i'll just change it just to make sure we're we're set for that all right so now let's go to the feet and let's add a box collider to the shins and this will represent when the character kicks so i'll call this what do i call it in the demo scene i want to be consistent In the demo scene, I call it left leg. So let's let's call it left leg. And I don't even know if I dare to get the same values, but I'll actually no. I'm gonna add this box collider. And that's a little bit big, so let's go ahead and make it match the shin length a little bit better. I can't even get this value right. Actually, there's a bit of a. I'm, all right, I'm giving in. I'm I'm copying the values. There's too many unique values to not want to. It was too tempting. All right, but these values look like they're working out well. So we now have a left leg box collider, and let's change this so that we go underneath the shin for a right leg. And we will copy these same transform values. And now we have a right leg as well. So we set up the box colliders for the hitboxes. Now we need to actually assign them. And we can do that under the body game object. And you'll notice if I scroll all the way down, there are these hitbox locations for first person melee weapon properties and third person melee weapon properties. So I am going to add four of those hitboxes, the ones that we created. So I'm under first person right now, so let me make sure I select the left fist, then the right fist, and they will be colored with gizmos when I add them. Um, and because we don't have any first person legs, we only have the third person legs with the full body animations, we want to assign the third person legs and we're going to do something similar for the third person hitboxes. So there's one, two, three, 
four, and let's assign the left fist, and then the right fist, and then the left leg, and then the right leg. And the legs should be a little bit more powerful compared to the fist. So let's set this damage multiplier, multiplier to 1.5. And that will change the color as well to make it a little bit darker, a little bit redder. And we will change that for both uh, the first and the third person. And so now we have our hitboxes set up for the body animation. Um, we haven't hit play in a while, so let's just hit play and kind of see what happens. So let me unequip the sword, and I am going to unequip the sword. I'm going to get into first per third person view since I like that view better for this. We can see that I am aiming with my fists up. Um, and I'll do the same for first person. So there are my fists. So that looks good. And if I try punching, we can see a punch animation does play, but it's only this right, uh, right punching animation, and we're getting stuck similar to how we got stuck with the sword. So with, we're in a similar situation as the sword, where the animator is set up to accept three different animations. The, um, we want him to right punch, left punch, and then kick. And because the body is not set up that way right now, that is why it's getting stuck. So these were values that were already set up by the animator. And we can change that pretty easily though by going to the same list that we were, we were at before under use animator audio. And let's just add two more states. So one, two and we will have a value of three and then a value of four and we can see that the selector is set to sequence so what that will do is it will go two three four two three four two three four and set up something like random where it would just randomly choose between those options all right so now when we hit play we should see the character punch punch kick let's unequip the sword or and punch punch kick punch punch kick punch punch kick so that that's working well and we'll see it for first person as well punch punch kick so that's how you set up the body melee weapon